so yeah, we're going to talk about how to be more kind to yourself. So for those of you who feel like you're always the one who shows up for everyone else, a huge part of avoiding burnout is showing up for yourself and in those moments where you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you're starting to feel like work is too much, talk to yourself as if you were talking to a friend, as if you were providing support to someone else. And quite often that can give you the immediate answers that you need for knowing what you need to do for yourself in that moment. Um, I'm sure that most of us wouldn't hesitate before telling a colleague or a friend to go out for a walk if they were feeling like they'd been in the house too long or to have a five minute break if work was feeling overwhelming. So just don't, I would encourage you to be a bit kinder to yourself and watch how you're talking to yourself. If it's not how you speak to a friend, then <laughs> think about addressing that. Um, also, when it comes to being kind to yourself, I reiterate the point, but give yourself some breaks. Um, none of us were designed to sit at a desk from half seven, eight in the morning till half seven, eight in the evening. That's just not how we're designed. Um, so just acknowledge the fact that actually taking a break will probably increase your productivity. Um, so that will actually help you get through um, the volume of work that you have. And allow your brain to escape for a little bit as well, where possible, whether that is on a walk or whether it is with a book. Just doing, engaging in the things that you know will take your mind away from whatever the stressful situation is for a little while. Um, do you have anything that you do to be particularly kind to yourself, Paul? Hmm. <laughs> I think it's the constant reminder. I think as a lot of people are highlighting in the comments and, and you kind of mentioned as well, Jess, it isn't natural for me to put myself first, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I know that it's important to put myself first and prioritize my mental health, um, but it still becomes priority number 10 when I look at my to-do list, when you know I've got to do something with the kids or something else pops up and emails popping up on my phone or someone, as you say, is, is potentially commenting on a post and you want to sort of deal with that first. So I think it's about the way I see it is constantly reminding myself and trying to retrain my brain to proactively manage my mental health. The way that I do that is a bit of a, a different way of doing that, but I anchor the statistics. So what I mean by that is obviously, you know, one of the statistics that's sort of shared quite a lot now is suicide is the biggest killer of men under 45. So the way that I kind of challenge my mind is if I don't go and do that run, if I don't do a bit of journaling this morning, if I don't focus on myself this morning, what's the biggest threat to my life as a dad, as a, as a husband, everything else? It's myself, right? So um, I have to do something about it. Doesn't doesn't make me weak. Um, it's that whole self-care is a priority. Self-care is not a luxury as well. You know, we're almost tricked into believing that if you look after yourself, you know, lucky you, I wish I could do that. But um, you definitely need to put yourself first, even if it is sort of 10 minutes um, in the morning. Lots of sort of people are saying that they really liked that idea as well, Jess, that you shared of how do you talk to your friends? How would you talk to your colleagues? Try and talk to yourself in that way. Um, yeah. And I think, again, I know you're a big advocate of this. Journaling has been something that's helped me in the past because I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fixer. I'm quite solution sort of minded and when I would write it down on a piece of paper, whatever was going on in here, I could almost rationalize it like it was someone else's problems. And then that made it a little bit easier to deal with up here as well. I absolutely love Anita's um, comment there about having an I am fabulous folder in her inbox with loads of positive feedback that's been received so that she can refer back to it um, in moments of self doubt. And that's something I'd like to start doing, I think. <laughs> that's yeah. I like that one. I like that one. And also this one, um, Antonia, she says, I like using the word non-negotiable to describe my daily self-care. If you have your mind set that it's non-negotiable, then you have to do it. And that's, yeah, I call them non-negotiables in the session that, you know, I deliver because I don't like the word coping strategy. You know, if it's a coping strategy, it's, it's very negative. Whereas if it's a non-negotiable, it's as you say, this is what I'm committing myself to do. 